the people working in these Costa and PC World must be thinking, what is this guy doing? He's been doing this for ages, just going back and forward along these roundabouts. Yo, what is going on dudes? Hopefully everyone is doing okay. So welcome back for another episode of the Mod 2 series. In this episode we're going to be going over probably one of the most daunting things that you can come across as a new rider or even a new car driver is roundabouts. Roundabouts are one of those things where even if you are a car driver, going on one for the first time when you're on a bike, it's a whole different experience. Alright, roundabouts do not have to be scary. They're there to serve a purpose and as long as you learn to navigate them properly, you'll be absolutely fine. So I'm sure everybody knows what a roundabout is, but I'll just quickly explain what it is. A roundabout is basically put in place to try and cut down congestion. So rather than having a bunch of junctions where cars have to queue up and wait, you put in a roundabout. And the rule of the roundabout is you always give way to vehicles coming from the right. That way, traffic can keep flowing to a certain degree. Obviously, it still gets held up and stuff like that, and things like rush hour and you know busy days and things like that. So you always give way to the right. That's the first thing you need to know. You can't give way to the left anyway because traffic doesn't come from that direction. But that is that is the first thing you need to know about roundabouts. So roundabouts in general are round. You know they're. A circular island and then you go around a roundabout and you come off at a certain exit so when you're on a roundabout all the roads that you pass are called exits so you'll have first exit second exit third exit fourth whatever you know roundabouts can have multiple multiple exits but I think what we'll do is we'll start off nice and simple okay we'll start off with very very basic roundabouts just one or two exits or whatever We'll go over how you approach them, what you should do when you're on them, and how to leave them safely. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head down to the industrial estate, where we normally do our kind of slow manoeuvre stuff, you know, we've done a lot of videos down there. I'm going to go down there because there are two roundabouts down there, and we can kind of keep going round them, and they've both got a couple of exits, so it should be a good place to practice and show you what it is you need to do. But what we'll do is we'll have a quick talk about them as we're riding over that way. So apart from obviously knowing that you have to give way to the right, you have to use what's called lane discipline. Lane discipline. That is when you know which lane it is you have to go into when you're approaching a roundabout. There are road signs, but not all road signs is gonna tell you what lane you have to be in. Some do. But I'll tell you why in a second. So the basic principle of it is imagine the roundabout is like the face of a clock, all right? And the road you're on approaching the roundabout is six o'clock on the clock, all right? It doesn't matter if you're coming from the north, south, east, west. It really doesn't matter, all right? When you're approaching a roundabout, you're approaching it from six o'clock on a clock, okay? So the reason you do that, and the reason to think of it like a clock, is you, you can then use that clock face method as a reference to where all the exits are on the roundabout. So if we're approaching from number 6, like we always do, anything between 6 and 12, including 12, you have to be in the left-hand lane, alright? You go into the left-hand lane. Anything past 12 o'clock, going clockwise down to 6, and, and, and including 6, you'd be in the right-hand lane. So if you wanted to take the first exit on a roundabout, and the exit was, say, where 9 would be on a clock face, you'd be in the left-hand lane. So anything between 6 and 12 going clockwise, because you have to give way to the right, so everything goes clockwise, you would go into the left-hand lane. Then anything past 12 all the way down to 6 again, because 6 is still an exit, on the roundabout, even though you're entering the roundabout from 6, you can go all the way around the roundabout and come back along the road that you came from. I'll put a link in the description below of a really good website, and it has a basic kind of illustration of 
a four exit roundabout and if you were approaching it from the number six and it basically shows you i think it's got a picture of a car in it but for the sake of the video it's exactly the same as a bike you know roundabouts they're universal the way they work it doesn't matter if you're on a motorbike it doesn't matter if you're in a car you know a tractor obviously tractors and buses need more room but the principle is the same so anything from 6 to 12 including 12 the left hand lane and anything past 12 coming back down to 6 is the right hand lane now there are exceptions for that some do have road signs to tell you otherwise so some roundabouts may only have the left lane turning left and every other exit you'd have to be on the right hand lane they're not always signposted they'll either be signposted or they'll have arrows on the lanes or they can have both and that is what you call lane discipline you know which lane you have to be going into obviously you do get these roundabouts that are multi-lane roundabouts like i'm talking like multi multi lanes like four or five lanes and they can be confusing but as long as you've got a good understanding of road signs and you know what it is you're looking for usually they're pretty straightforward as well and once you're on it it's just a case of following your lane round you're staying in your lane you're doing all your correct signals all your correct checks and observations and then safely leaving the roundabout so we'll head down this industrial estate and we'll go over the entrance and exit and then we'll talk about a few more things so the other thing that is probably one of the most important things in my view anyway is where do you put the bike in the lane you know you're on a lane for a roundabout where do you put your bike well the whole road positioning doesn't really come into play so when you're approaching a roundabout and you come in to your lane just like this lane here you always stay center of your lane you never move away from the center of your lane that's the only road positioning that comes into play on a roundabout is you stay center if you're turning right on a roundabout taking like the third or the fourth exit or whatever you don't go into position three like what you would do if you're going to turn right and you don't go into position one if you're taking the first exit and turning left all right you stay in the command position position two and the reason you do that is to give yourself as much of that lane as possible so you're not giving any other road user any chance to come up on the inside of you or on the outside of you so if you stay center of this lane what i'm doing here nobody's going to be able to come up the inside of me nobody's going to be able to overtake me while i'm in this lane you know if i was in position three there somebody could creep up the inside of me and that can cause a lot of problems and it can be very dangerous as well when you're in your lane doesn't matter if you're going first exit tenth exit you know left lane right lane it really doesn't matter it's always the same you always stay in the center position this roundabout that we're approaching we're going to be going straight on here but i know from being over here so many times that the left lane is left only see the arrows so you can only go to the left whereas the right hand lane is for all other exits right so we're approaching this first roundabout and we can come round this roundabout and come back along here so this is exactly what we're going to do we're just going to turn around go right away around this roundabout and come back along this road so we're going to go mirror mirror signal lifesaver move over into the right hand lane we're checking make sure we've got a nice gap everything's clear we're going to go around now there are multiple exits here so i'm just going to have a wee lifesaver every time i pass a couple of exits just to make sure that i'm safe after passing the last exit before hours indicate big lifesaver onto the new road cancel your signal now the osm psl still comes into play here we went over that before in a previous video that also works when approaching roundabouts so observation signal maneuver position adjusting our speed and we're looking so we've just done our osm psl before we've even reached the roundabout so we're giving ourselves plenty of time to react to anything that comes our way 
and we're going to work our way round the roundabout as well. You don't have to go fast, you know, roundabouts are generally quite tight turns. Indicate, big lifesaver, onto the new road, cancel your signal. Nice and easy. Again, quite a few exits here, so I'm just checking my left mirror, checking my left shoulder, just to make sure. Once we've passed the last exit before ours, indicate, big lifesaver, onto the new road, cancel the signal. So that's the principle of roundabouts. So it depends on, you know, what junction you're taking and things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over there again, because I don't know if you spotted it or not. The lines on that road back there, they're either very faint or they were never there in the first place. I'm not too sure if my eyes are playing tricks on me. But if we're approaching this roundabout, for, ex for example, I know that the road up here is wide enough. So the general rule is, if it's wider than a car, treat it as two lanes, all right? So mirror, mirror, signal, lifesaver, maneuver. So just imagine that there's a white line in between this big piece of road and then create your first, your left and your right lanes. So you would imagine that there'd be a white line down the middle of that road. You would then pick whatever lane it is you're going in and then keep command position of that lane. The people working in these Costa and PC World must be thinking, what is this guy doing? He's been doing this for ages, just going back and forward along these roundabouts. If you look at this junction here, again, there's no white line. So imagine that there's a white line and it would be in lane two or the right hand lane and then obviously command position. Right, so what we'll do is we'll move on now, we'll move on to a different roundabout. One thing you have to remember about roundabouts, observations are key. Although you have to do your left lifesaver before taking your exit, what you need to remember is you can also use right lifesavers, but there is a time when you should be using them. So for instance here, I don't need to use one, and the reason why is because there was no lane to my right. So if you're coming on to a roundabout, and you're going to take your exit, and there's still a lane to your right hand side, you do a right lifesaver, then a left lifesaver. See, a lot of these roads don't have the centre lines in them, so you've got to do that, you know, judgement call, basically. You know, if there was a white line there, where would it be? And then you would go into what would be the appropriate lane. Right, what we'll do is we're going to head up towards Stirling Castle, so we're going to be in the middle lane here. And I'm going to show you when you would use a right lifesaver. So we've came on to the roundabout. I'm going to indicate to leave because there's lanes to my right. Do a right lifesaver, left lifesaver, onto my new lane. Cancel my signal because there's a road there. And with this one here, this is something I'm going to talk about, but just remember that sign, okay? Remember that sign, and just remember what I'm doing on this roundabout here. 90% of the car drivers get this wrong. The guy behind me didn't. <laughs> Good on you. So, what that was, was a roundabout that doesn't look like the road sign, okay? <laughs> That's going to sound confusing as hell. All right, so basically what that is, most of the road signs you see for roundabouts, if it's a basic roundabout, it's going to be a round roundabout with the exits on it. Okay, so for example, back there, that one said that the second exit was straight ahead. But we could all see that the second exit was actually off to the right. So you would think if it was off to the right, shouldn't it have been the right hand lane? Well, no, because that's what catches a lot of people out with that. You go by what the sign says. If the sign says the second exit is at 12 o'clock, then it's the left-hand lane for that 12 o'clock exit. Whether the, the, the actual roundabout itself has a completely different look, you go by what the sign says. Because a lot of people who stay in the area who know that roundabout, they think because it's past 12 o'clock, they go in the right-hand lane. But you go by the road sign not what the roundabout looks like. So bear that in mind. Go over that with your instructor. I went through it all with a fine tooth comb just to make sure that what I was doing was correct and that's the way you're supposed to do it, all right? If the sign says the exit is at 12 o'clock but the actual exit you're taking looks completely different on the roundabout, 
you go by what the sign says all right signs are there for a reason to keep the traffic flowing and to make people aware of what lanes they should be in okay so just remember that i just thought i'd let you know that because we're passing that one and that last roundabout was a great example for it Right, so we've done the basics. Choosing the lane, positioning, entering the roundabout, you know, using your whole OSM, PSL as you approach the roundabout. Lifesavers, you know, you don't always have to do a right lifesaver if there's no lane to your right. And although the 12 o'clock rule does apply to most roundabouts on the road, there is the odd one that will be signposted or will have arrows on the lanes telling you which lane to use. They do take a little bit of getting used to. But once you've been round them a few times and you know, take your time, do all your observations, all your checks, all your signals, making sure that you're safe and you're not putting yourself or anybody else in harm's way, just keep doing it, keep practicing it, and you'll find that it comes naturally where you don't even think about looking for a gap, you just see the gap. What are gaps and what do you look for? So gaps are pretty much that, they're gaps in the traffic, all right? So you're gonna get a break in traffic at some point on a roundabout obviously the busier it is the less light you're going to be able to find a gap pretty quickly you know if it's like rush hour traffic in a busy city you're going to be a little bit slower obviously you know that's just the way it is more people on the roads it takes more time but what you want to be looking for is you want to be taking a gap that is safe all right you don't want to risk taking a gap where it forces any other road users to slam on the brakes or maneuver out the way or whatever you know that is a bad choice of gap <laughs> the way i always look at it in fact i actually learned this when i was learning to drive if you can see a gap and if you could think you could walk across the road before that car gets to you then that's a good gap all right I mean, i'm not talking about a slow walk i mean if you could walk across the road before that car gets to you then that's a good size gap all right that's the way i was taught when i was learning to drive and i still use that today i still use that today and it's never let me down it has been such a good indicator of what kind of size gap to look for you know once you've been on a roundabout you know so many times and looked for so many gaps it becomes second nature it's not too busy just now so i mean finding gaps is going to be fairly easy but there's something that you should really be going over with, with your instructor, you know, just make your instructor aware. I'm struggling with roundabouts or whatever. I'm just being very hesitant because you can get marked down for that. If you're sitting waiting at the roundabout in your lane, waiting to get onto the roundabout and there's cars going past and you've missed numerous gaps that the examiner behind you can see and he could think to himself, that was a gap, that was a gap, that was a gap. And you've not went yet, you will get marked down you will get marked down for it, for being hesitant. So just bear that in mind. So we'll talk more about indicators on roundabouts. I showed you how to indicate coming off of a roundabout. After you pass the last exit, before your exit, is when you indicate. I know that's confusing as hell, but <laughs> once you uh, once you see it and you understand that, you will, like, ah, got you, okay? So when do you use indicators approaching a roundabout? It all depends on what direction you're going and what exit you're taking. If you're taking the first exit, the first exit should always be indicated with a left-hand signal because the chances are the first exit is going to be off to the left. Sometimes it can be straight on and that can be a, a, a tricky one at times, you know, because you think it's straight on so you don't indicate going on to the roundabout where in fact you should actually be indicating. There is a few roundabout here that will show you that are like that. If you're going straight on, taking the second exit for instance, you don't indicate going on to the roundabout, you only indicate for coming off. And then if you're going anywhere to the right, obviously, right signal. So we're coming up here. We can't signal yet because there's a junction there. We pass the junction, mirror, mirror, signal, right lifesaver. We're going to move over to where the right-hand lane would be. Another lineless roundabout. Round the roundabout, indicate to the left. Lifesaver, onto our new road. Cancel our signal. And carry on. Now you get these little roundabouts up here which are basically a little mini roundabout, that's what you call them, mini roundabouts. As you can see, there's no way you're going to get two cars in there, so that's treated as a one lane. So you'd approach it in the centre, you'd come on to the roundabout, indicate lifesaver onto your new road, cancel your signal, and carry on. 
So every roundabout, regardless of what size it is, it's always treated the same. Find somewhere in your local area and just go there. You know, if you can't get out on a bike just at the moment because of COVID and whatever, um, obviously you're gonna have to wait until you're out with your instructor, but if you have a wee one, two, five, or even a wee scooter or something that you're legally allowed to ride, just go out and find some small roundabouts and just practice that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you up to a roundabout where the first exit is straight on. So usually when you get roundabouts where the first exit is straight on, there's not very many exits on the roundabout. But it's something you should be aware of because you can get caught out for not signalling. It can be a wee bit confusing at first, but I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. So we're approaching the first exit, you can see it's straight on. So it's not going to the left, it is going straight on, but because it's still the first exit, we still have to indicate. Alright, we have to indicate, move over to another unmarked lane onto the roundabout right lifesaver left lifesaver onto the new road cancel your signal so you see how that worked even though we went straight on there the straight on was actually the first exit so you still have to signal for it with this one right hand lane is we're going straight on it's clearly indicated to us indicate lifesaver onto the new road cancel your signal so you see there's a pattern and that pattern never changes all right no matter what roundabout you approach no matter how big it is how small it is how many exits it has the pattern is always the same you choose the lane you stay in the correct position on the lane once you're on the roundabout make sure you're doing all your safety checks make sure your indications are right and make sure you're doing your lifesavers before you exit now this one here is exactly the same first exit is straight on so we'd indicate to the left because we're taking the first exit we lifesaver and cancel so what we'll do is i'll take you to a few roundabouts that can really really catch people out and the reason it catches people out is because some roundabouts you basically you pick your lane which is fine you get onto the roundabout which is fine and then the lane that you're in suddenly splits into two <laughs> so then you've got to go uh, okay which lane am i taking so that's when paying attention to road signs now this is another thing i'm just going to quickly show you you have to make sure that you're doing your lifesavers if you if you have to stop all right so we had to stop there so we had to do a wee lifesaver just to make sure just bear that in mind if you need to stop at a roundabout if you have to physically stop the bike sometimes you can keep rolling and you can just head on out but other times yeah obviously you have to stop to find your gap the best way to do it is when you're looking for your gap all right you'll see your gap before your gap gets to you if that makes sense all right so you'll see the last car coming round and you'll go ah there's my gap so when you say to yourself there's my gap that's when you go right lifesaver lifesaver there's my gap out i go all right so you have to make sure that if you're stopping you still have to do lifesavers all right just make sure you do those lifesavers dudes remember i was talking about the double lanes this is a double lane here you're approaching it just like you would do any other roundabout come on to the roundabout indicating right lifesaver because the lane turn left uh, right left and lifesaver onto the new road and if we do need to switch over lanes mirror mirror indicator big lifesaver change lane now this is the roundabout I was talking about so we're going to go right here and this is what catches a lot of people out so we're going to be going up there past KFC so we're on to the roundabout we're in our lane we're in our lane okay we're just making sure that we're nice and safe then all of a sudden as we get around here it splits into two lanes see it so we'd have to take the left hand lane we're still indicating right though not like that dude that dude cut the lane passing the last last exit indicate lifesaver and on all right so that catches a lot of people out because they'll come round and they'll stay in the light, right hand lane and then they'll just cut over the left hand lane to take their exit so be very very wary of things like that i'm going to go and show you another one which is probably a little bit harder mainly because there's just so many exits it's kind of the same but i personally feel it's a little bit trickier just because of the way the lanes curve but we'll go around and we'll show you right so this is a other roundabout in question we're going to be taking 
we're going to be going to the right again so doing our signals we've checked our mirrors we're done our signals we're gonna to have to stop so I'm looking for my gap there's my gap lifesavers we're on this is our lane and what you're gonna see just now we need to follow the lane round don't do what that guy did just cutting lanes see it splits into two again now what I'm doing is I'm just doing a few extra lifesaver checks here because there's a few lanes that are round about me and then we're exiting onto the new road cancelling your signal and you're done all right so just be wary that your one lane can turn into two lanes so it's just really about spending time on roundabouts i mean unfortunately there's no easy way to learn them the best way to learn them is to go on roundabouts that's pretty much about it you know in order to learn to navigate them you have to go on them and learn to navigate them and you're going to make mistakes you're going to make little errors here and there and that's absolutely fine you know there's nothing there's nothing wrong with making a mistake it helps you learn so you're going to make mistakes but just remember what mistakes you make and those are the ones that have to get corrected especially on those roundabouts but any roundabouts that lead on to motorways or dual carriageways you approach them and you navigate them just like any other roundabout so you just have to remember that no matter what the roundabout is no matter where it is how big how small what shape they all get navigated exactly the same way well anyway there's a hopefully you found this video helpful i know it can be a little bit confusing especially when you're not used to it you know if you've never been on a roundabout before you know you don't have a car license it's going to be really confusing if you've been driving before and you've got a bike and it's your first time going roundabouts on bikes you might be able to pick it up a bit quicker but regardless just remember that you just take your time you know take your time look well ahead make sure that you're giving yourself plenty of time to react and you will be absolutely fine dude like always if you have any questions any concerns if there's anything you didn't quite understand please feel free to comment below you can get me on social media as well and i'll try my best to clear any issues up that you might have or if you just want any other information regarding mod 2 or anything feel free to get in touch but if you've liked the video guys give it a thumbs up i really do appreciate every single one of your likes and of course if you want to see all of my videos click on that subscribe button and click the bell while you're there that way you'll get notified every time i upload a video but until next time dudes stay safe and take it easy